They tell us to be realistic, that progress means all these things have to happen. They tell us that we can't go back to the old way. They tell us be realistic. But there is no old way, no new way. There is a way of life. We must live in balance with the earth. We must do it. We have no choice. If we allow ourselves to, get, to be apathetic, or we allow ourselves to be lied to or tolerate their lies about what they are doing to the earth, then we are betraying our intention. We are betraying our purpose here. We cannot protect that seventh generation if we do not protect the earth. We cannot protect ourselves if we do not protect the earth. The earth gives us life. The earth gives us life, not the multinational corporate government. The earth gives us life. We need to have the earth. We must have it. Otherwise, our life will be no more. So we must resist what they do. They want to break our spirit. They will do everything and anything to break our spirit, our will to live. We must learn to resist. We must learn to see. We must learn to look. We must learn to step out of this reactionaryism. All of our lives, they've had control of us through their schools, through their TV, their electronic media. They've had control of us all of our lives. They have programmed us. They have made us become reactionary. We don't think, we react to what they do. We don't think, we react to everything that they do. We react to it. Because they know consistently throughout the past, the people have always reacted to what they have, to, to their manipulations of circumstance. They know that the people always react. See, and they outnumber us with guns. They outnumber us with money. They outnumber us with votes. They control all the machines that count the votes. They got it all stacked in their favor, except there's a key. The key is we must start thinking and stop reacting. They have, the oppressor has no thinkers. They have no philosophers. It's all scientific. It's all economic. It's all manipulative. They have no thinkers. You go look and you deal with the enemy and what the enemy does is you, the enemy will send somebody out on the street to hit you in the head and the guy says, I'm only taking my orders. And if, you're, if you can come from a position of strength to this guy that's hitting you in the head and say, hey, you got to stop hitting me in the head. We want to talk. Then he says, well, I have to go to my superior to see. They have no thinkers either. If we will start to think and we will learn to see, to see what reality really is, we will outnumber them through the thinking process. We will take our minds away from them because through their manipulation of our mind, they control our spirit. And they know this is true. They tell us, see, they want us to believe that we are powerless. They want us to believe that we are becoming overwhelmed, that they can overwhelm us. You see, but they're paranoid. They are more paranoid than any of us are, no matter what happens to us. Because, see, they have to put people in here to come and listen to what we're saying so they can go back and tell. So they're afraid. They're afraid because they know we're talking about reality. Now, why are they afraid? They are afraid because they know that they are dealing with the illusions of power, which are based on the realities of violence and brutality. They're afraid. See, they don't want people to think. They don't want people to be talking, and they don't want people to think about what they talk about. Because they know. They've known it all along that they built their whole thing on illusions. And because they have drawn us into giving this illusionary world all this power, they have taken our power away from us because we believe in the illusions. It's going to be real hard for us to get our way back. We have to deal with the economics. We have to deal with the politics. We have to deal with the whole nuclear madness. But we're going to have to purify and cleanse our spirit a little bit, our resistance, movements. We have to think real seriously about movements. See, movements make up a resistance. We have to be very careful and as how we organize. You think that this energy crisis and you think that this economic inflation thing, you think it's an accident? You think it just happened? But we're becoming more liberal because they were becoming more affluent. And because they were becoming more affluent, they were starting to say, well, equal rights for the blacks. The young people were starting to say, well, it doesn't matter what you look like. We all have a worth. And then 
that led up to where everybody started saying the Warren was wrong. The other side, they saw that all of these conclusions were based on a level of affluency that was reaching the average American and the average American was becoming more liberalistic in their thinking because they were getting this affluency. So they're getting even. They've had a redistribution of the wealth. They did it through energy, through oil, to make the people more poor. They did it. They had a redistribution of the wealth and the price of gasoline and bread went up 100%. See, but by the time that they got the prices raised by 100%, it was too late. It's not an accident. You've got a class, sexist, ruling class power structure that exists in the world and it's composed of heavy industrialists, the people who are, who are part machine. And they intend that they're going to keep their hold on the world economics. We live in, an, in a machine world, an industrialized world. And you watch where the nuclear bombs are going. They're going to places like Africa and the Middle East. And they're going to give some of these people some bombs in the hopes, and they'll even have some of these people drop one of these atom bombs on each other one of these days. See, they can afford to hand the bombs out there because these nations have no capability of delivering the bomb back to where it came from be it the Soviet Union or America. Just for the record on camera, in your opinion, it, it, is there racism? <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, you know. Practically speaking, it's not even a question. It's a reality, it's a reality.